Law of the Bedroom number 70. Understand the life consequences of dating many women versus dating a few and marrying one. If you're still single and dating throughout the years of your life, realize the fact that as you enter your late 20s, 30s, even 40s, or 50s, that many of those around you about your age may have settled down already, started families, bye-bye friends. Their lives are going to change, and they'll probably leave you at the station. You know, what's more, women may wonder, why doesn't he have someone? Why isn't he married? Is he a workaholic, a womanizer? Does he have issues with commitment and intimacy? Maybe I should shy away from this one. And you know, in today's world, many people are single. So they don't really, you know, look down upon single people kind of like they did 10, 20 years ago. But still, though, there is those lingering questions. Still, though, there are those lingering questions. You know, you're single. Is it by choice? Do you enjoy your singledom? Or do people not get along with you well enough that they don't stick around you? So, you know, maybe you have your own reasons for staying single, and that's fine. No problem there. You know, it's a free country. Live your life the way you want. Maybe you just feel more comfortable dating while you work on life projects motivated by personal passions. Or you're still waiting for the right gal to come along who you can share your life with. Why is this so important for you to know this? Well, let's say you're in your late 20s or 30s. Sure, you can still party and rock and roll like you were in your early to mid 20s. Ah, but one thing is different as you get older and older. Unbeknownst to you, time does not befriend you like it used to in your early to mid-twenties. More importantly, if you wanted to start a family and have children before you reach your late thirties or forties, and of course your fifties, yikes, you should consider finding just the right honey, you know, gal, to share those plans with. The reason is you don't want to grow old alone per se and single, and if you wish to have a family one day, you will want to be able to spend youthful quality time with your children as they grow up. You know, you certainly don't want to be 60 years old when your first child enters high school, you know, because you had that child at 40 or 45 or 50. Oh God, yes. Or you've got two others right behind the first one. Yikes. Then think about your grandkids. Are you going to be 80 when your children have children? Time, my friend, keep your eye on the clock. That's all I'm saying here. And here are some thoughts to keep in mind when living life and searching for a life mate, you know, in a honey doll. You can only give yourself to and please one woman at a time for the rest of your life. You can't please every woman. It's impossible. What's more, when you can find a woman you can trust and she loves you and will do anything for you, go anywhere with you, support you and your dreams and your life pursuits, Among many other important qualities, save yourself the heartache, time and struggle, and consider spending the rest of your life with this woman you've been dating or you just met and you haven't, you know, and you've dated for some time. And here's the thing, you know, everybody's looking for that 100% perfect, you know, list check off person. They've got all the right things. I mean, it's 100%, you know, that they're looking for in their list. But the truth is nobody's perfect. And you'll never find that person because they just don't exist. It really is about compromise and knowing that, hey, if there are some things that we can work on together, like, hey, maybe you're a little overweight, you know, or something. And I'm just giving you an example. Well, overweight, you know, being overweight, you can, you can lose pounds. You can go on a diet. You can work out. You can work on your body. Everybody has the potential to work out and become really super hot, you know, (laughs) super hot, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, The point is, is finding people who are trustworthy, can handle money well, can stay healthy and not drink too much and smoke and do drugs, you know, um, are easy to talk to, soft-spoken, they're not argumentative. Those are the kind of people that are hard to come by and you should consider like, hey, I think we need to stick around together for a while and try this out. You know, avoid reaching those regrettable years and saying, gee, I had her and then I lost her. I should have married her when I had the chance. 
Now I'm alone and on my own. And with age, it's becoming harder and harder to find a life mate. Wow, I now know I really want to start a family. My job's going good. I've got money in the bank, a house, a car, and no one to share it with. All those years of dating were fun, and I certainly enjoyed my freedoms. But now, just a few years later, wow, I sleep alone every night. Gosh, only if I would have had asked for her hand, we'd be living together today as man, you know, husband and wife, and I'd be the happiest man alive. Now, granted, I'm very well aware of certain movements in the male communities about not wanting to, you know, be with women, spend time with women, interact with women, you know, going their own way, these men are. I'm very well aware of that. And they've got honest justifications. You know, they've been hurt. They've been divorced, court raped, etc., etc. So, you know, guys, gals out there, this goes for everybody. We've got to be very mindful and very careful about who we interact with and very upfront and very transparent with, hey, I've been through this before or my friends have been through this before and I don't want this. It's why I wrote that book, 251 Dating, Sex, Marriage, and Relationship Regrets that people have. That's why I wrote that book. Check it out because it goes through all these regrets people have had. And if you read through them, and let's say you read through it with your gal there, look at this, honey. I don't want this to happen to me. I don't want it to happen to me either. Okay. We're becoming more on the same page, you know, more on the same path journey. So now the question comes in, are you ready to start a family? How old are you right now? Is your career in place? Does it have to be? Has the right gal come along yet? If she has, again, consider taking her off the market, marrying her, or at least getting engaged or hey, let's set a plan. You know, I just met you. I like you a lot. I'd like to take you off the market, make you mine. Why don't we set a plan? Why don't we evaluate ourselves every three to six months going forward, see how we're doing, and let's see if we can go the whole year and just really get into each other. And if we can go the whole year and get into each other and basically, I don't leave your side, you don't leave my side, we don't argue, we, we're working on projects, we're making money, I think we need to stick together because I think we're going to make more money. I think we're going to do more things together. I love making love to you. A year later, you could say to each other, we have made so much love together. We have had sex so much, so many times. We've lost count how many orgasms I've given you. What are we doing? Why don't we just stick together? I think I have found someone that I could be with and you too. Well, it's been a year. I'll tell you what we do. Let's get married. Let's plan to get married in six months or so. And let's plan it out well so we do this right and we don't make any mistakes. And we also prior to, and I've heard this in some countries where, I think it was China, where there's a school. They want you to go to school before you get married just to ensure that your marriage is as sound and as stable as can be because they don't want divorces. They don't want people breaking up. I can understand that. And that's why I write these books too, because, you know, coming from a divorced family, my mom divorced my dad when I was six. We lived um, in a single mom household for, oh, I'd say six years, you know. So I know what that's like. I don't want to get divorced. I don't want to go through that. My friends have gone through divorce and I saw the mistakes they made and I saw what they did and didn't do. And today, with everybody being so whack and ADD and, you know, so narcissistic and blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm exaggerating to make my point. You know, everybody's whack. So it's kind of like we need to have some guidelines, need to have some rules to go by and some virtues, you know. And that's why I wrote these books, because if you come into my world, you know, that gal for me, if you come into my world, this is how I operate. And this is what happens when you are good. This is what happens when you're bad. And it goes both ways for me too. So, stuff like that. So, you know, when it comes to getting married, where marriage is concerned, it's still recommended that you take your time, especially if you're young and in your 20s. You know, 
kissing, brushing up, when you find that lifelong mate, the rest of your lives together will depend on the results of your decision and the getting to know you, getting to know one another period of time. There is that process that you have to go through, and it could take a few years in some cases. And what if it does? You know, it could save you both 30, 40, 50 years of potential grief and heartache if you're with the wrong person. Further, save yourself the heartache of getting married only to find out that the one you married, you know, you married too fast, you both wound up divorced, and the second time that you get married, you've already been there, done that. The enthusiasm might not be so grand the second time around, perhaps. Besides, women would rather choose to be your first wife than your second or your third in most cases. So take your time, guys. Keep your eye on the clock. Think hard about what you really want 10, 20 years down the road and how the decisions you make today will affect what happens down the road for you and your honey. And here's the deal. Guys, stop thinking about sex all the time and so much. Stop thinking about scoring with women. Start thinking about your income. Start thinking about your plans to make good money starting today, going into the future. Stop being broke. Stop living in mommy's basement. And I'm exaggerating to make my point. Okay, stop. And the next law of the bedroom, number 71, is get rid of your roommates. But you can't get rid of your roommates if you don't make enough money to be able to afford to rent your own place. We'll get into that in just a minute. I want to go back to what I was talking about. So, I want you to be careful and understand the life consequences of dating many women versus dating a few and marrying one. In my own lifetime, I have dated only a few women. Literally, I can count them on one hand. I've never been a player. I don't play the field. I don't have time. I'm busy. I don't want to put women's hearts out there and then hurt them. I don't want that. I don't want that on my conscience. I live a pretty clean, solo, celibate life while I'm single. And then when I'm in a relationship, I'm monogamous. Okay, there's no cheating. No, nothing like that at all. And I'm very mindful about the marriage situation, but I'm a man. I can marry down in age. Five, ten years, fifteen. <laughs> and depending on how good looking I am, you know, 20, 30, 50. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the point is, is I'm a man. I have this option. I don't have to carry the baby. I just have to make the baby. And again, when you get older... Three things you have to keep in mind. Your health, your attitude, and your looks. Your looks can be determined by your health. Your health is determined by what you eat and drink and don't eat and don't drink. Your attitude is determined partly by your health and how you look and that kind of stuff. But party attitude, fun attitude, optimistic, positive, that's a good attitude to have in a relationship. And then as a side note, finances, and of course, relationship mistakes. <laughs> Try not to make many mistakes. Try to keep yourself clean. I was talking to somebody the other day. They said, Bart, uh, you know, do you have any kids? And I said, no, I'm very careful. And that was my statement, my response. I'm careful. I don't put myself in situations where that's going to happen. And then on the financials, you know, avoid debt, pay your bills, make more money than you spend. Get your finances in order. If you've got money, good looks, good health, no baggage, psh, guys, you're the prize. Because a lot of women today are in debt. Some make great money because women can in today's world. It's a woman's world today for making money. Consumerism is out the, oh my gosh, it's out the yin-yang. Websites selling clothing and makeup and hair and wigs and lashes and lip gloss and all the things that women love, it's all being sold online and they're loving it. And whoever's owning those businesses, mostly women, they're making a killing. So they're making good money. And even these, uh, I would say these YouTubers, let's say YouTube, for example, these women who have great big channels on YouTube and they're making good money. Problem is they're single and they're alone and they're lonely because today's world, you know, men aren't making the money like they used to. Because it's changed. It's a different industry today, a different economy today. It isn't like the old days of manufacturing and business and all that kind of stuff. It's, that's been outsourced to countries that are now developed and they're upcoming. So that whole income that men used to have has moved offshore. 
So now men are asking themselves, well, what do I do to make money? And then with women being so strong and independent and powerful, they don't need a man like a fish needs a bicycle. So men are saying, well, if you don't need me, then okay, I'll just go over here and go fishing with my buddies, you know, every weekend (laughs) and drink some beers and have fun, you know? And if a woman wants to kind of, you know, roll around in the bedroom, we'll do, I'll do that, you know? I mean, it's just, today's world is so, I guess the word is like fragmented. It's been like kind of blown to pieces and there's no formality anymore. There's no structure. Everybody's just kind of doing their own thing. And for the most part, they're kind of happy. But then at the same time, when they put their head on the pillow and they sleep in bed again alone, they say to themselves, you know, I don't like this. I want somebody, but I don't know who I can trust because everybody's weird. Anyhow, let's get into the next law of the bedroom. Number 71, get rid of your roommates. I love this one. This is really cool. So, hey, comment in the section below in the comments area. Let me know what you think about this law of the bedroom, understanding the life consequences of dating many women versus dating a few and marrying one. And I'll tell you something else. By dating a few women, you have less BS on your mind when it comes to like having to manage the memories of a thousand women that you slept with or whatever. And by dating a few, you keep your space open and on alert. Your radar is clear for that one right woman to walk into your life. That's what's cool about dating a few women, like one at a time, or, you know, not playing the field because you're free. It's like if if that right woman came to you and she's totally interested in you, she finds out, Bart, I really like you. You know, are you single and available? No, I'm dating five women right now. (laughs) Okay, that's not good. But if you could say to her, I'm totally single. I've kept my act clean. I have no kids, no divorces. My finances are in order. As you can see, I'm not too bad looking. A little bit. My best days are Thursdays. (laughs) I'm kidding. What's on your mind? Well, I'd like to go out to lunch, get to know you, blah, 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 blah. That's the benefit of dating a few women. And then, of course, winding up with the one for you. That's a great book, by the way. Find the one for me. It's a great book. Check it out. Find the one for me.com. I wonder who wrote it. Oh, I did. <laughs> okay, let's get to the next law of the bedroom in this series. You're doing great. I hope you're loving all this material. 